Jackson. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this November 13th, 2013 edition. Tonight, only 106,000 have picked up health plans through Obamacare. Seattle police deactivate their Wi-Fi spy grid after public outcry. And Jakari Jackson sits down with broadcaster Ben Swan to discuss how the people can take their power back through jury nullification. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Our top story tonight, just over 100,000 are able to enroll in Obamacare. And keep in mind that you cannot keep your current health care plan that's been evidenced in Florida and California recently. So just be aware that when you need it, you're probably not going to have it. And we'll touch more on that just in a little bit. Secret globalist treaty threatens internet freedom. Now, this is a document leaked by WikiLeaks, a 95-page, three, excuse me, 30,000-word document spelling out the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now, if you're not familiar with the TPP, you can take a look at this clip from the Alex Jones Radio Show today. This agreement makes it perfectly clear. That Next, you're going to say the sun came up this morning. That's right. They've had <laughs> at least 19 meetings on this. They said they were going to get this done by the end of the year. This all started under the Obama administration in 2010, this particular trade negotiation agreement. And this covers everything. The chapters that we got today are really a wish list for, the, for NSA, for Hollywood, and for Big Pharma. But there's stuff in there for all the big corporations. The bankers have their part in there to uh, stop any legislation that's going to rein in derivatives. We've got jobs being moved offshore. We've got food safety being taken away by Monsanto's interest. And we've got energy being uh, having a fork stuck in it. And the same groups want the borders open. Exactly. So this is what people need to understand. And a lot of people are starting to wake up, especially people on the left are very concerned about this. Predominantly because of this chapter that was released today that is essentially bringing in CISPA. You know, they tried ACTA, PIPA, CISPA twice. Now they're going to get this in through the TPP, the same things that they were trying to do as far as the ISP. Can't get it in Congress? We'll just do it internationally. Right. Do it internationally. Go over everybody's head. Leanne, you've got some of those sections. Right. Well, speaking about the ISP, so so file downloads could be criminalized, right? So now your internet service provider is going to be basically like the copyright police. So it's going to monitor everything you're doing online, and if you do anything that it doesn't like, it you it's a it uses. So a, it's spying on you, and they're already is, doing it. Yes. This just puts it into some type of law. It, and it gives you a three. It has a three strikes type system, and so if you break it, you know you break their rules three times. You're out. You you're that? off the internet. You're banned. Your you're banned. Website. Individually banned. You, know, you so. are banned. You, whatever computer you're. And website. that's why Microsoft's coming out with the internet ID. Google is unifying it all. It's all an NSA takeover, Greg. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, remember that the internet was started by DARPA. It was originally a DARPA project. So maybe they've been, it's kind of been a uh, pump and dump strategy the entire time. <laughs> you're right. Continue. And also, too, uh, speaking about the offshoring of jobs, this basically it eliminates the Buy American. So it allows foreign corporations to bid on contracts here. And they say, oh, well, that's good for the U.S. because we can go and bid on procurements contracts over overseas. No, it's opening up our borders, our countries, so that foreign countries can bid on contracts here. Well, these things are always selectively enforced. There's federal law that uh, most of the federal money has to go to small businesses. None of it does. I mean, it's all written to be selectively enforced. I mean, if you're Tyson Chicken, you can ship any chicken you out you, you want. If you're a small chicken operation, you do one thing wrong, you're all going to jail. Now, that story is much deeper than we have time to go into right now. So definitely go to Infowars.com and read the full report for yourself. Seattle police deactivate Wi-Fi spy grid after privacy outcry. Now, this is a story originally aired on the local news in Seattle. Anthony Gucciardi took it and expanded on it. This is a Paul Joseph Watson article. Infowars subsequently obtained documents from a government insider that revealed how the mesh network was far more than just a means of tracking people's locations. It was also linked with DHS fusion centers and collected a wealth of information. Now, these imperial probe droids have the ability to track your location, your phone calls, your app usage. And the police said, yeah, we know that technology is in there, but we're not using it. Well, that turns out to be a lie. The police are lying on the situation. The city council claims that they're in the dark. So it's time for the people of Seattle to rally up, say, we want to get rid of these things, not just have them turned off, rip them off there. And then also we need to get rid of these cops, not just say 
that, okay, he can go work in the basement. Like, no, bro, you need to go find a new job altogether. So Seattle, keep us up to date on what happens with that. But it's not just out on the streets. This happens everywhere, and now it's in your schools or even more prevalent in your schools. School's new spy system places children under complete surveillance, and it's very 1984. It's very chic and trendy. SST Incorporated is currently installing gunshot detectors inside of the school. So they're tracking your kids at, with laptops that they give your children. They're putting uh, cameras inside the trash cans and so forth. And now they're going to protect your children with these gunshot detectors. I'm pretty sure if somebody shoots a gun inside of a walled off school, it's going to make a pretty loud sound that you don't need a gunshot detector for. It's just another way to monitor your kids, uh, to track your kids and charge them because they eat an apple or they eat Cheetos instead of an apple. It's, it's, all, it's all relative. Now we'll move on to this. Congressional approval sinks to record low. Now it seems like every day something's falling. It's Obama's approval rating. It's Congress. It's the Senate. It hit its peak about 2009, and then it's been steadily downhill from there. So good job, Congress, for uh, being consistent with the rest of the country and going down the tubes. And let's move on to this next story. Afghan opium production hits record. Now they're putting out 5,500 metric tons of opium. That's a 49% increase in your war against drugs, as, as they claim it is. Meanwhile, your troops are out there guarding the opium. You can see the video right there with Geraldo. He's out there with the Marines, and they're saying, yeah, we don't like it, but we have to do it. Otherwise, the farmers will attack us. And it's completely ridiculous because if you get caught with the opium here, if you get caught with the weed here, whatever else, you're going to jail. Meanwhile, the Marines are helping grow it over there in Afghanistan. It's truly uh, disgusting, but that's uh, the fear of our world now. Soros-linked group pushes sex to sell Obamacare. Now, I want to caution everybody that everything you're about to see is real. It is very much real. This is not satire. We did not make this up. And this is from Progress Now, a group out of Colorado. It says, let's get physical. And the lady's saying, you know, I hope he's as easy to get into bed as it was to get my birth control. And here's some guys, you know, doing keg stands are crazy, but it's not as crazy as not having insurance. And we have one more, and this is some ladies, they're working out and they're drinking while they're working out. And it says, yeah, you know, I like to work out with my bestie. It's fun, and, and that's what we need to do because Obamacare takes care of us. So basically in, implying that if you, uh, if you get Obamacare, you can be the life of the party. You'll be the guy doing the keg stand. You'll have all the promiscuous sex that you want to have. And hey, if you get drunk, if you uh, get in a drunk driving accident or you catch a venereal disease, Obamacare is there for there too. So uh, go ahead and do it. It's, it's all good fun with Obamacare. Now we're going to end tonight with something that I thought was somewhat laughable. Maybe I just have a bad sense of humor. Bomb squad called over homeless man's bag. Now, this is a situation that happened right here in the city of Austin. Uh, a janitor or a maintenance man was out, and he saw a homeless man. The homeless man said, excuse me, sir, do you know where the local FBI headquarters is? The janitor pointed the homeless man in the direction of the FBI headquarters, but the homeless man left his bag. Now, this freaked out janitor, I guess he was freaked out because uh, the man asked where the FBI headquarters was. He calls the police. Okay, you want to call the police. The bomb squad comes, investigates the man's bag, and the things that he had in his bag were just so routine and mundane that they didn't even bother, they, they just they didn't even bother to mention what the man actually had inside of his bag. It was completely ridiculous. And you can see uh, that's one of the robots they have, and that's the bomb squad suit and all that. But yeah, if a man leaves a bag on the side of the road, you got to call the bomb squad. And I'm surprised they didn't blow it up. But you know they want more cameras in the city of Austin. So if they do that, I'm wor worried of. If they're just going to show up and start blowing up people's bags on the side of the road. They don't blow up this guy's bag, but hey, it could happen. Well, that's it for this segment of the InfoWars Nightly News. Stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Special Reports, all that and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now stay tuned because in our interview segment, I'll be talking with activist Ben Swan. He's going to be telling us about jury nullification. So stay tuned for that and also for more special reports.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. Now we go to Tyranny Watch concerning a multinational terror drill. I'm Gigi Arnetta with Tyranny Watch. Well, this week is Grid X2. It's the national grid security exercise that's happening across the nation through Canada and Mexico. And it's supposed to be over tomorrow afternoon. But the truth of the matter is, Janet Napolitano has told us several times, it's not a matter of if our grid goes down, but when our grid goes down. During these tests, the question is, with its aging infrastructure, will our grid be able to stay online? And what happens after Grid X2? In London, the tube was paralyzed when there was a national grid failure which affected the underground. That mass outage caused mayhem in the London commute. It's already happened in Venezuela, where it froze transportation, business, and overall communication. And just recently, Canadians caught a rare sight on video. That electrical fire is just one example of what can happen. Banks in the UK are preparing. They had their war game dubbed Waking Shark 2 yesterday. It ran for five hours and it involved simulations designed to test how well bank and other market players communicate and coordinate with authorities and each other. An industry source who attended said one of the simulations featured a cyber attack by a foreign government and a denial of service attack, which makes network resources unavailable to users. So the idea, just like in the New York version last month, called Quantum Dawn 2, is to make sure market players communicate with authorities. Really. Don't forget how great our government is with cybersecurity. Healthcare.gov. So when the globalists steal everything from right under our noses, we can thank our government for assisting them in the biggest heist of the century. Meanwhile, mega corporations like Walmart are aiming to be off the grid. By 2020, they intend to make 20% of the power that they use off of renewable energy. Of course, state and federal regulators say they're worried that utilities could end up with fewer customers to pay for costly transmission lines and power plants. That translates into they're not sure which lie they're going to spew as they gouge us with astronomical electrical rates, pushing along Agenda 21. And of course, look at the problems we're having with smart meters. Oh, this is just the beginning. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Now stay tuned because right after this break, we'll be talking with activist and broadcaster Ben Swan. We're on the march. 
The Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is investigative journalist Ben Swan. He's going to talk to us about jury nullification and also some new news concerning the Boston bombing. He joins us now via Skype. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. All right. Now, you have your new site and a lot of new endeavors, but one of the more recent things I've seen you active in is this jury nullification. Can you explain to us what jury nullification is? Sure, absolutely. It's actually kind of a new concept even to me. I, I've had some different people who have told me about this idea, started looking into it. We've done a couple of stories about it. And, and the more that I've researched it, the more I'm really impressed by the power that the American juror really has uh, through their vote uh, on a jury, whether it's a grand jury or it's a trial jury. But the idea is very simple. It really comes back to this, that when we, we go into the electoral process, a lot of times people feel like their vote doesn't count for much. So for instance, they'll feel like, hey, if they're going to uh, vote for president. You know, what's the point? It's not, nothing's going to change. If I vote for um, even the governor in my state or even local races, nothing changes. The thing about jury nullification is it's a very simple concept. When you are on either a grand jury or you're on a trial jury, you as a juror, according to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1794, you as a, as a juror have the power to not only judge the facts of a case, but to judge the law itself. Now, that is tremendous power. We're talking about the ability for you as a juror, for instance, if you see a crime that you think is a victimless crime, you have the ability to say, listen, I'm going to try the facts of the case, but if I believe this is a bad law that's about to send somebody to jail, I'm not going to, uh, to enforce it. I'm not going to send them to jail. I'm going to judge the law itself, and I'm going to hang the jury. Uh, a great example of that. So we see all these stories all the time about, for instance, you know, you have these kids who send pictures of themselves in their underwear, right? And, mm -hmm. and some teenage girl does this or some teenage boyfriend receives it and, and sends it to someone else. And then the feds come in and they, they charge these kids with trafficking child pornography. Well, what we hear all the time in media is, well, this is a terrible consequence of this. And the fact is these kids probably shouldn't go to jail. They call them unintended consequences, but there's nothing you can do. But that's right. not true. What they're not telling you is that you as a juror, if you're sitting on this jury, you can hear the facts of this case and then turn around and say, you know what? I understand what the law says here, but I also have the ability to judge the law itself. And the judge, the law wasn't intended for this. It's not intended for some teenage girl to have to now register as a sex offender mm -hmm. for the rest of her life. That's so exactly right. And Ben, we hear people like Constitutional Sheriff Richard Mack talk about this concept very often because uh, we just recently had a situation with the Florida and Sheriff, uh, the Florida Sheriff Nick Finch. And he was in a situation where he just threw out a uh, case where a gentleman came in. He said the man's Second Amendment rights have been violated. The sheriff comes in, throws out the case, and then he's eventually charged saying that, that he's uh, tampering with evidence and so forth. And eventually he won that case. 
That's right. That's right. And, and it really comes down to the power that the jury has. And when we talk about Second Amendment rights, jury nullification would be very powerful in those cases. We talk about drug laws and drug cases. Again, jury nullification uh, is a very powerful tool. So what we're encouraging people to do, they, we've, we've set up a page at binswan.com. It's binswan.com slash just us. That's J-U-S-T. US. We have a Facebook page for Just Us Jury Notification. We're actually setting up a full-on website, and we're doing this as a coalition with other folks like Josh Tolley and Angela Keaton, uh, Luke Radowski, Bob Murphy, um, Tatiana Moroz, and Jordan Page. So a lot of, of folks who were involved in the liberty movement, like Joby Weeks, have come into this and said, let's let's kind of pull together and let's create attention on jury nullification. I mean, you have groups like FIJA, which have already been around for some time, promoting this idea. So we're kind of the, new to the table on this. But the goal is not for us to kind of take over jury nullification. It's just to promote the idea to people and, and say, listen, if you get a, a jury summons in the mail, instead of hiding from it, dodging it, trying to find every excuse possible to get out of it, you should actually be running to that jury um, summons and saying, I want to serve because this is your opportunity to actually have a vote. One That's out of right. 12 people on a jury. You have so much power here. That's right, and that's people need to realize because you do have power. Just like you said, people often they throw it away, or I got to take the kids to school, <laughs> I'm sick. But you can go there and really affect change, and we need more people to take these steps. Now, Ben, I want to move on to some other topics with you. You also have some new news on the Toad Chef case, uh, the gentleman who was killed by the FBI. That's right. You know, Ibrahim Tarashev is this Chechen-born uh, guy who was living in Orlando. He was friends at one time with Tamerlan Sarnayev, who was one of the Boston bombing suspects. Uh, and it was back in May of this year when Tarashev was killed during an interrogation uh, by the FBI. And the story is very strange, a lot of very strange details on this, where supposedly everyone else left the room, the agent's alone with Tarashev. Tarashev tries to attack him, and the agent has to shoot Tarashev seven times in the head and the chest in order to protect himself. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the uh, really unusual things about this case is the fact that the autopsy report in late July was ready to be released, and the FBI intervened and said, don't release the autopsy report. That's a very unusual thing. You know, for folks who cover um, um, murder cases and, and killings and um, death cases all the time in, in media, we know that that's not usually how it works because an autopsy doesn't uh, assign blame. It doesn't mm -hmm. assign judgment. It simply states how someone died. That's right. And essentially all the injuries they received. Uh, we, we have interviewed Tadashev's, I can't say it, but widow, his widow, uh, she's over in Russia right now, and we've interviewed her and talked to her about this case. But one of the things she reveals to us is the fact that Tadashev was actually shot, according to the coroner, in the back of the head. Wow. Um, as opposed to just being shot in the head and in the chest, that kind of paints a picture of someone coming at you. Um, and she's actually released some pictures to us from the Orlando Medical Examiner's Office um, that show the entry point of that wound, again, to the top of the head and, and downward. So uh, we're actually releasing that on Benswan.com. It'll be up either by the end of today or um, I, early tomorrow morning, but the interview. Now, ben, you, you yeah. piqued my interest with that, with the gunshot to the back of the head. Was he shot multiple times in the back of the head, or how did this work out? No, he was shot seven times total. Was shot in the. He had a, a wound in the stomach, I think, that penetrated his liver. Uh, he had multiple shots uh, in his chest. He had one in his shoulder, the upper shoulder, but he had one only one in the back of the head. Mm. And so what it indicates to, to his widow is that he was executed. Yes. Um, story, again, is only one agent was in the room. Um, it does raise questions. Look, I don't know. I haven't actually seen the full report, but it certainly raises questions when the FBI says, don't release this information about you know, essentially how he died, how many shots he had, and what direction he was shot from. Uh, and then they have a story that there was only one person in the room with him if he was shot in the back of the head. And you remember, Ben, that they keep changing the story. He uh, he attacked him, then he attacked him with a broomstick, then he attacked him with whatever else they said uh, was in the room at the time. And that story keeps changing as well. Right. It was uh, it was a knife. It was a broomstick. Um, it was a metal pole at one point. Uh, he does. He, the, the story keeps changing on this. Uh, the details are very sketchy. And one of the things we talk about in the story is, unfortunately, as really shocking as this story is and how little evidence has been allowed to be released into media and media really hasn't even chased the story other than new media really the story's gone gone unreported um but the reality is that as much as this has happened there's so many americans who would just look at this case and say ah 
Who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, the FBI did us a favor. Another one of those terrorists. And that's one of the dangers that we run into in the paradigm that we're in right now is that so many people just ignore these very important stories that, that deal with civil rights, constitutional rights, uh, the right that this guy had, whether it's legal rights or just the right to be alive, violated possibly uh, by the FBI. And, and so many people are just disinterested. Now, Ben, what do you think about the whole Boston bombing scenario? Because we have yet to see any footage of the Zarnaev brothers actually putting the bombs down. Yeah, and you know, that was one of the things that originally, remember when when the Sarneo brothers were first charged, um, and, and when I say charged, I mean the FBI came out, held their news conferences saying this is who we're looking for, and they released the first part of the video. If you remember, they specifically said we have video of um, these guys placing the bombs uh, in different locations, and they said that. But none of that video has ever been released. Mm -hmm. Now, you would assume, one would assume that video would be released at trial. And you remember, Ben, the governor said that the video was described to him. He didn't actually see the video. That's right. That's right. And, and it's, you know, again, you would assume it's going to be a trial. But even at the time, there were some major questions about this. I mean, why would, if you're the FBI and you're releasing this information about these guys, not show video of them putting the backpacks down? in those locations. Uh, again, it's, it's unusual stuff. That doesn't mean that the FBI is lying. It just means that we need to require evidence. We need to require a higher standard when, when law enforcement tells us these kinds of things instead of just accepting the narrative as we're told. And certainly as journalists, it's, it's sad to me that we don't question these things. We just go along with whatever the press release or press conference tells us. Exactly. Ben Swan, BenSwan.com. Now in our closing minute, tell us what you have coming up besides the uh, Toad Chef. Yeah, so we, we definitely want to uh, release that again, we, as we mentioned about jury nullification. And then we're also working through a very interesting story I'd encourage your, your listeners to check out. It's on the situation in Idaho. We're going to release this uh, story, uh, the print version of it. In Idaho, there is kind of a war going on, and, and a state rep who has created a very strict rule to keep the feds from being able to seize guns in Idaho is now being smeared as a rapist. Uh, due to some charges that he had against him 41 years ago. Wow. And there was a story that was just released in the paper there on smearing this guy uh, and basically painting him as a, like a, this sex offender. Uh, and it's a very interesting story of how far local law enforcement there is going in some cases to protect their relationship with the feds. And we'll be releasing that on BenSwan.com as well. All right, BenSwan, BenSwan.com. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you so much. And if you would like to find out more about jury nullification, you can stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up Nullification, the Rightful Remedy. It has many of the all-stars from the Liberty Movement, so you can get that at the InfoWarsStore.com. And also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now stay tuned for more special reports. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. It's time for some good news. Austinites can now opt out of the electronic spy grid for a price. Austin Energy has offered customers a smart meter opt-out program. It'll cost $75 to swap the smart meter for an analog meter, plus a charge to have a meter reader come to your home. Now these opt-out fees were voted on by the Austin City Council, and it's a testament to having a publicly owned utility that's accountable to its taxpayers and doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of the Texas Public Utilities Commission. The opt-out program fees from power companies to other Texas residents are nothing less than extortion. Some American Electric Power customers in Texas will pay more than $350 to replace a smart meter with an old analog meter and up to $35 a month recurring fee. Texas Encore customers are in for even greater sticker shock. Encore could charge as much as $842 to make the switch, plus a monthly fee of $25. But the smart meter program is not mandatory, so how can the utility companies introduce an opt-out when the public never actually opted in? Aren't property rights the ultimate opt-out? Well, if two Democratic members of Congress get their way, the program will become mandatory via the Smart Grid Advancement Act. 
It was introduced earlier this year by Congressmen Jerry McNerney and Matt Cartwright. Under the Smart Grid Advancement Act, all electricity providers would be required to join the Smart Grid and install smart meters for customers nationwide. If it's successfully passed, we might see even more symptoms reported nationwide, like those experienced by homeowners who've already had smart meters installed. The muscle contractions that my husband and I were having, involuntary muscle contractions, inflammation, headaches, insomnia, um, concentration problems, swelling, chest pains. Think about your blood's being damaged. Your oxygen transfer's not happening. They, they t did a live blood analysis of red blood cells. They pulled people's blood before they put them in front of a smart meter and the red blood cells look normal. Then they put the people in front of a smart meter for about two minutes, about two feet away. It was shocking, Alex, what the blood results showed. The red blood cells had ruptured, they were distorted, and they started stacking up upon each other. So think of this, think of this, think of the iron in your blood as an antenna. All right, it's a metal. So that's why the red blood cells... And there's are, iron. That's right. That's why the red blood cells Copper. are so susceptible, okay? And so what's interesting is a signature of health issues is anemia. My husband and I both had anemia. In addition to those health warnings, smart meters are a search without a warrant every single day. Its primary intention is to transmit data. It receives data from smart appliances, which will be in your home, and they will be communicating to the meter everything that's going on in your home through the use of RFID technology, through the use of, of new technology like Verizon's smart TV, which has the apparent uh, capabilities to detect uh, facial recognition, uh, speech, and even you know the moods of of rooms and what's being said, how it's being said, so that they can you know then immediately push back to you what they feel that you need in that moment for advertising purposes. It's it's not giving us more control. It's actually giving the control to big corporations, to to utilities, and to governments who will be sharing in this data that is basically being extracted uh, from the home in a very very high level of detail. So while it may be pricey for your family to opt out of the smart meter program, the value of your life and liberty is far greater. Don't allow corporations to pave a perilous path right into your home. Take back your power today by picking up a copy of this impactful DVD at the InfoWars store and investigate the smart grid for yourself. How much is your city charging you to opt out of the smart meter program? Let us know in the comments below. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo.